Hello and welcome to the Art of Total Refusal. Uh, we are very happy that uh, Total Refusal accepted our invitation to our series of conversations with artists and theorists involved in the collections and the archives of the ZKM. And a warm welcome to Leonhard, Michael, Robin, Adrian and Jona. And as always, we begin the conversation not by reading off resumes that are as detailed as they are impressive, but with a short film about our conversation partners. It's the year 2018 when Total Refusal is born. An open artist, researcher and filmmakers collective operating in the world of computer games. It all started with the submission of a short film titled Operation Jane Walk. Robin Klengel and Leonhard Müllner submit the film to the Austrian film festival Diagonale. They do not have great expectations. The film consisted of a performance recorded in the video game Tom Clancy's The Division, a dystopian multiplayer shooter. It shows a guided tour through the post-apocalyptic New York City, addressing architectural history, urbanism and the interventions of the game developers. Staircases that not only keep away the dirt from the house, but they also serve a social function. Against all odds, the work is enthusiastically received. Since then, Total Refusal's films and installations received 27 awards and were presented at more than 130 film festivals and in a great number of exhibitions, among them the Berlinale, the Doc Fortnite Festival at the Museum of Modern Art, the Architectural Biennial Venice 2021 and, of course, at ZKM. Since 2019, two works by Total Refusal are in the ZKM collection. For sculpturing a peace monument, they created a sculpture within a shooter game by means of machine gun fire. In circumventing the circle of death, they made two armies dance in circles, thus preventing senseless slaughter. Who is Total Refusal? Today, the collective consists of Robin Klengel, Leonhard Müllner, Michael Stumpf, Susanna Flock, Adrian Jonasheim and Jona Kleinlein, uniting a wide variety of backgrounds – art, film, cultural anthropology, media theory, philosophy, political theory, design and music. But what makes Total Refusal so different, so appealing? Total Refusal is a media guerrilla, with which we try to the Spielerinnen from the Schönheit der Kunst and the Künstlerinnen from the Schönheit des Computerspiels to überzeugen. But it's not all about beauty. Total Refusal was launched as Digital Disarmament Movement, now calling itself a pseudo Marxist media guerrilla. By appropriating video games, the group criticizes mainstream productions for mostly failing to challenge the values of their players, instead affirming hegemonic moral concepts and power relations. Total Refusal appropriates video games and thus creates new narratives and new public spaces, challenging the status quo. That was total refusal in three minutes. And before we start the conversation, I would now like to briefly introduce uh, us, the three hosts. Um, in the conversation today with you, there is Laura Schmidt, currently a visiting scholar focusing on computer games. Laura was also the one who edited the wonderful video we just saw. And uh, Jerome Nguyen, the curator of the exhibition Gameplay at ZKM. And my name is Margaret Rosen. I'm the head of uh, collections and archives at ZKM. I would like to start with a question about your um, theoretical self-representation. Uh, when you founded the collective, you called yourself a digital disarmament movement. What was the motivation for founding such a movement? Yeah. I mean, as you said it in the video, which is really mind-blowing, I must say, um, 
we, we were really honored so much. Um, it, it, it started with uh, Operation Jane Walk with the city tour. Um, and uh, somehow it, it was a time when also Leonhard started to research uh, a lot about um, possible interventions in video games. And somehow it comes natural to, if, if, you, if you criticize the medium and then there is this big question about violence in the video, uh, in video game, then somehow it comes natural to, um, to, to, to search for pacifistic approaches. Somehow, I, I don't know, this was for us really kind of our start with this medium. We also were greatly influenced by works by Eva and Franco Mattes, for instance. Um, they, they also intervene into video games and, and kind of break this logic and by, by breaking it kind of show how absurd these worlds are. Um, and so we, we, we decided that there, there is so much to do, there's so much to discover and to kind of question in this medium that we started with a very, with a very pacifistic approach. So our first works are really driven by this idea to, to search for places of peace. Um, of course, it's in, important for us as well. We are all dedicated pacifists, so it kind of makes sense to discuss these topics here also. And then we started to make How to Disappear, which is our second movie, which is a, yeah, a peace movie shot in a multiplayer online, multiplayer online shooter game. So um, that, um, that, that was kind of the first, first drive. It, it, then somehow it, it, it changed a little bit as we... As, as of, if, you, if you search for the reasons why this medium as is as it is and why also violence is such a predominant genre or, or, or narrative that like uh, that is so prominent, we, yeah, I mean, you end up with capitalism, of course, because there is no other medium probably that is so much uh, it, uh, uh, yeah, driven by marketing logics and <clears throat> every decision when it comes to big games is kind of valued by whether it, it sells or not. So their marketing departments are huge and very, very important and influential in gaming industries. And at the same time, there is a, it's, it's, it's really maybe the, the most, like how to say, like global, one of the most globalized industries. So there's many people, but the, the projects are spread all over the world. Of course, they're outsourcing whatever they can. Um, and then they have this crunch time uh, um, logic. So like they are working over time and this is very normal. So kind of then the question of, of capitalism and, and, and the logics of this medium drove us into becoming a pseudo, pseudo Marxist media guerrilla. So yeah, now we kind of switch both of these, um, yeah, of these titles a little bit. We are still dedicated pacifists, but we are more uh, into Pseudo Marxist, because it makes very much sense to take this approach also to the world of video games. As you've just answered already the question, I wanted to ask you the definition of your pseudo Marxist uh, um, identity. Uh, I might start with the last theoretical question before I hand over uh, to, to Laura. Um, you explicitly are referring also to the Situationist International and um, in your self-description and not everybody is familiar with what this group of artists and theorists were doing in the 1960s. So may you just make one remark um, about the Situationists and your relation to them? I mean, the um, Situation nationists, situationists, sorry, they are quite, um, um, I'm starting with an air. So um, the situationists are, um, are um, beginning to work when like um, the political economy is quite changing um, the urban structure. Um, and when they kind of uh, uh, recognize um, or acknowledge that um, the um, urban planning isn't anymore or wasn't never in the hand of um, the many. And they want to like uh, claim back public space and they want to do it by arts. So um, by doing that, they, they kind of um, like pouring disorder or chaos or 
arbitrariness in these very, very um, strict urban plannings of um, the post-war period and where everything is, is, is so clear and so dedicated. Um, and they were kind of um, remapping um, the cities like Paris, where they're living in, um, and proposing new, um, new perspectives onto the city in order to claim them back. So they did it with art. Um, of course, they did a lot of other, uh, other things like um, films, etc. But like this, this kind of um, the tournaments, um, like this, this um, change of a situation uh, in a way it wasn't expected nor intended um, from anyone before. And also by this kind of walking through the city and by that um, kind of claiming it um randomly walking it not dedicated to like uh um to, for fitness reasons or for shopping reasons but just to 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 see all these particularities in the cities so and we are um as gamers and we are gamers we are jumping into um remodeled worlds of ours like there are a lot of cities remodeled, like from, from New York, Washington to Paris um, and San Francisco, whatever. And some of them are meticulously um, remodeled. So um, they, 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 they look like our worlds, like, but it's a pastiche of our worlds, but it's, it's not the same because you can do different things and there are different rules. Um, and whenever we are um, interacting with those rules in, in this world in, of video games, then we just like have a kind of, um, we, we, we say something um, for, for the other world. Like we, we this, this, doesn't, this does mean, this does reflect back to our physical reality. Because it looks so um, um, similar to our world. And we are bringing chaos into the rules. We are bending the rules within video games. And this, this makes us um, pacifist, pacifistic because like we are, we are like mostly you, you, can, you can just do something else than fighting. And then we're trying to do something else. And this is exactly also what the community does. Like the community of uh, our gaming community, they love to bend on the the rules and love to destroy the order made up by the rules of the games. Um, and this is, this is, this is, this is something we, we share with the community, which, which, which we are in a kind of an inspirational contact with. Um, and we also want to give back um, some inspirations from our side. So, and as the media is, is super capitalist, like as um, Soraya Murray points it out kind of the extreme capitalist mass culture product per se um the rule we we're gonna like ignore or bend our kind of um capitalist rules so we can we have to talk about capitalist in this media this was the short um answer thank you so um maybe laura you want to go on now Huh. I was going to ask a different question. I'm not so, but the thing is, now from what you said, you state that um, video games, mainstream video games, uh, largely fail to challenge the values of the players. That's what you say, and that instead they affirm hegemonial moral concepts. So, what could be done differently in video games? I'm sure everybody has to say something about this topic because we are thinking a lot about it. But uh, uh, Michel, would you like to say something about what could be better in video games? I'm He's sure. So shy. He's sure. <laughs> okay. So I mean, 
I, I think the obvious thing that comes to mind, um, one of the more simple steps before we get into like the gameplay side of things is, is, is narrative or stories, the stories that are told, the characters that are, that are told. Um, even, even more or quite similar to the blockbuster movie industry, the, the genre is just kind of stuck in, in, in a situation where they're kind of repeating the same tropes over and over, you know, telling the same uh, predominantly militaristic stories um, involving us in the same gameplay and telling stories from from similar similar perspectives. I mean, that that was one of the driving factors, for example, behind um, our movie, How to Disappear, where we're kind of um, shedding a light on, on war from the perspective of the uh, of the deserter, even though there are more war games than um, you could possibly count. Um, we've as gamers experienced war uh, or the consumable gaming form of war only through the eyes of like the same heroic cliche characters over and over again. Um, while while many other perspectives stay completely um, yeah unrepresented in in the entire medium so that would be the first thing that comes to mind to 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 broach out and 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 kind of take a more critical approach um, when it comes to to story design and then of course consequentially game game design um, game play design um, which both, both of which is at the moment hampered by the sort of schizophrenic spot that the entire genre is kind of stuck in, where it's it's kind of undecided on whether um, it wants to be political or not. With and and this undecidedness has predominantly to do with what Robin said, meaning that um, games are designed through marketing studies. So so you know. It, uh, like blockbuster movies, it's a, it's a medium that is predominantly that employs political symbols whenever uh, there are marketing reasons for doing so, which is why, for example, we we saw the uh, implementation of um, identity politics and and related symbols over the last years. Um, but at the same time, there is a an, an extreme hesitation when it comes to like getting into the political side of things uh, in the narratives, in character design, really kind of um, taking a, a political look at topics uh, in, in the course of video game stories. Mm, yeah, yeah, I guess that would be, so that would be uh, one, one thing that we would like to see or one thing that, that would would be an improvement to the situation for for like a commitment to accept that this is indeed a political medium which cannot really be argued with since i mean we're playing war we're you know uh, um, doing things that are highly political yeah to kind of accept this fact and then treat the storylines that are told respectively Sometimes yeah. I just wanted to add sometimes like to playing um, fantasy in a fant within a fantasy genre like um, um, with, with elves and orcs is has a more dedicated political um, narration than um, to play um, as like uh, um, Wehrmacht soldiers, Nazis against the Allies or the Soviets. So they are, they are much more shy with political implementations um, um, and, and hold them back. So you, you, can, you can possibly be a good German Nazi soldier with a good heart, but, but, but like if you play an orc, like you're really, a, really, really a mean guy. Yeah. <laughs> like you, you're, you're someone really bad. Um, I have to play a little bit of devil's advocate. Um, do you think that AAA games can even exist um, other than they use a realistic or hyper-realistic environment without the marketing analysis and decisions as games are very expensive nowadays to, to develop them. I mean, we've seen the, um, that the, me the democratization of the medium as well, like in, in many other uh, f forms. And I'm not sure if it's uh, completely true. I mean, the, 
of course you have to pay you have to pay the the developers but i think it's it it always comes down to um like uh paying people what what they like giving them good worker environments and worker conditions and that's the same in the video game environment um and that's not the case right now and uh, in many like developers live in a really precarious environment um but now i actually forgot what i what my point was but <laughs> Maybe someone else wants to catch on. <laughs> no one? So I, I do think that um, while going back to your question uh, of whether the um, um, of whether there is space for like a, 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 a political game or one that is not predominantly driven through marketing analysis. I mean, you can tell that you can tell that uh, this this kind of um, rift or this yeah this kind of rift that's that's going through gaming, whether deciding on whether it is it wants to become or it wants to accept that it is a political medium or not, is something that. Uh, goes through the entire community. It's not just developers, uh, but also also gamers. So there is a substantial uh, over the last years. There is a substantial um, part of the gaming community that is kind of fed up with um, uh, um, pretending or, or kind of like shallow narratives that reaffirm the same political values over and over, and 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 then pretends not to be political at all. So you can you can see this in 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 uh, online com like in forums on reddit in in discussions like every time a new ubisoft game comes out there is the same this like it 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 almost seems like we're kind of stuck in a loop there's the same shitstorm following uh, an an interview where ubisoft once again um reaffirms that their games are not intended to be political so so clearly this is a topic that that um is of concern for the end for for the larger gaming community as a whole and i think um even if of course there will always it means mainstream games being mainstream will always kind of see try to tread on safe ground so to speak there is a lot of space to move in the right direction there in the genre uh, that that would be well accepted from from gamers um or the gaming community as a whole I would, I would add that um, making mass media, creating mass media is always to like um, uh, figuring out the most consensus of our society. And by that, um, repeating it. So um, you can't get out of this kind of looping consensus, which is actually our most like more intrinsic agenda to break that, like as artists, which is a bit ridiculous, but nevertheless, we are, we are, this, this is what we are dealing with. Um, and as like your, 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 your question refers to um, a very interesting thought I had, or maybe a lot of other people like uh, have, um, like video games starting to be, uh, started to be super successful in the 2000s or in the late 90s where the genre of shooters and so on um, from the third perspective became popular or invented. And from that very moment, it didn't change that much. Why is that so? Because when something is successful in capitalism, because capitalism can't move any longer anymore. It's like with this tank ship in, in the, in, 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 um, <laughs> Ever, ever, even, or how, how was his name? Was in the like, Suez Canal. Yeah, in the Suez Canal. It can't move. It stuck. So, so we have to stick on this this kind of um, genre because it brought so much success to our industry. And this is basically the reason why we're playing shooters and why there is on the blockbuster level, yeah, there is no such thing as a, as a different kind of genre than fighting and shooting and whatever. 
um, and it, 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 um, visible. This, this, is, this, is, this is to acknowledge capitalism is the most conservative um, uh, economy possible. It can't move. It's not about inno innovation. It's the opposite. So um, there is this question, what, how would games have looked like if like communism wasn't uh, um, um, failing or like if there would be another political economy available? Because like, like, as I put it out, games were starting to becoming successful in the very moment when like neoliberalism was um, shit-facing everyone. And, and in this very moment, like computer games appear on the market and became the most important um, entertainment media. But what if like computer gaming was invented in the, in the time of Wilhelm II or whatever, like when, when we had a completely different um, political economic setting. And that, that, this is the thought, or, um, like I would think it's, it would be le less, less about this, um, this repetition of um, um, consensus, marketing-driven consensus. This, is, this would be my first suggestion. Nevertheless, I don't believe that, that games from North Korea would be that great or from the Stalin era, but it, it's, just, it's just like a thought. And, and there are a lot of studies which, which say like it was much more about um, what, the what the community is doing right now with, with AAA games. For example, like with Fallout uh, and and so on, like it's a lot about sharing. It's a lot about um, community-driven um, decisions, influencing game companies, and so on. And and also, what is the most important in my last sentence about the, uh, this 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 matter is uh, more cooperative, less competitive. Because now the most successful genre, whatsoever, is. Uh, Battle Royale, in which just like out of hundreds of people, one is succeeding. I mean, how sick is that? Mm. I, I've got a question, I think, about one of your recent works, which could, could fit. It's about hardly working, where you analyze the daily routine of NPCs, which is non-player characters in video games. So why did you start to focus on these characters in video games and what is that interests you a lot? I think it could have to do with the representation or of our society in, in video games. Uh, yeah, of course it, it, it is. I mean, um, we, we found uh, the, the question of the NPC, so the, the extras in the game, um, specifically interesting. I mean, of course, we always observe the worlds in which big video games are taking place. So we're always interested in this environment and, uh, and in the stage picture, because of course, also, we, we always try to do something else with it. So it's kind of, this is, this is our approach. And when it comes to NPCs, um, this is specifically interesting because they, I mean, why are NPCs there? They exist because uh, they want to give you the feeling of authenticity of being in a normal life. No, they, they try to make you forget that you are actually in, 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 a, in a hyper real um, surrounding, but, but you are just there. So there are people going on there, following their daily activities. And, and the interesting thing is that they also kind of, they, they, they really want to be normal. So they're, they lack individuality. So you always, if you watch NPCs, they're really standard person somehow. So NPCs follow a certain consensus or so, yeah, they kind, they kind of represent normality and represent the ordinary and the, which is the counterpart to the avatar. So the avatar is, is unique and is changes the world and the NPCs, they maintain and they remain the same. And even though they follow their daily activities, there's never any kind of change. So what was interesting for us was uh, specifically their, their daily routines, which become more and more, um, uh, yeah, uh, complex in, in, for instance, Red Dead Redemption 2, where they really follow complicated patterns. They have different um, 
during different times of the day, they do different stuff. They react to the environment. They greet each other. If it rains, they take cover and stuff. Um, but um, at the same time, of course, their their life is not less absurd than any other NPC's life because they are there just to yeah to represent uh, a non-existing society, and um, which is such an interesting. Um, thing to observe somehow so we, we got really we fell in love with them if you watch them for a while you really have the feeling that there is uh there is like a individuality inside that there's a really a person inside you try to you you kind of you 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 know you you, you really try to see a human in there and that that makes them really you now complex beings to observe yeah now in this work we focus now on 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 the question of working because they also do work, of course, they go to work every day. So they, uh, they, they go, they, they produce something, they, I don't know, carry stuff around or um, everybody has a job. Not, not besides the really rich people in the game, they just sit there and um, read books or so, or smoke cigars, but everybody else, basically the underclass really goes to work. And uh, which is also really absurd thing because they, they they do work but at the same time they don't really produce some something so they they are stuck um we we, we liked what uh, Hannah Arendt wrote about uh, the the animal laborants which is kind of the contrast to the to the the, the acting kind of changing uh, um, um, subject and the animal laborants also works but they, but it doesn't through the work it doesn't change anything it just repeats and repeats and even even through working actually maintains its own position in society and doesn't actively contribute to or for in for its maintenance and, and yeah we, we really have these animal laborants there in the games and uh, had a great time observing them so that was that was the approach for this work um, I might come back with a question to the discussion uh, uh, we had before. I mean, you stated we are now living in a world where there seems to be no alternative to, to cat capitalism. And my question was, if you really want to um, change the system, you need allies. So you've chosen to go into the art world. Um, is it there where your allies are? Do they, do they have, will they change anything or do you also have um, allies within the scene of gaming? I mean, or to ask it uh, even more simple, why did you choose to um, address this in an art context? I mean, the art world is is a Comanche territory for us. It like I was studying arts, but I um, somehow came came to the point where I don't see the sense of art as it is done per se, because it is a is a um, Nazist loop of the cultural bourgeoisie um, showing off their uh, cultural capital, um, and that by then pretending to be. Um, doing always the right thing to the world. So like in arts, you don't get a lot of attention. You don't get money at all. Like the political topics is very, very like, like it's about symbolic representation. So there is nothing, nothing to, to, to win. There is nothing to, to, to drag out of this art world. So we are having a kind of... Um, yeah, we have different kind of weddings. We, 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 we are in the film scene in which film festivals are much more broad as well as media festivals. Um, like people, almost everyone get, goes into um, cinemas and you also, like also our parents understand um, um, more when, when you show them narrations than if you show them some ab uh, abstract images. And our, like, our mothers <laughs> are always like this, this point of, um, uh, this, these are our customers, basically. Um, we, we want to convince them what, when, when, whenever we are doing something. Um, so if they understand, because um, they are coming not from the arts, um, then, then, then we can convince everyone. But of course, we, ha we, we are 
we're coming from academics, we're coming from arts and and whatnot, we're coming from the culture bourgeoisie. So of course we we kind of lack of street cred in order to pour everything what we are doing into the Reddit uh, um, uh, and 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 like also Michael also wanted to put us on four chan channels and so on. So into the communities and 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 by that kind of um, tr triggering uh, disobedience, self-reflection, anti-capitalism and so on. So um, we, we take all the, all the allies we get, even if they are like um, left liberals, um, we, we, we take them in, in, in order to um, um, filter our messages into, into the consensus and by doing that chain, yeah, trying to change it. Thank you. Anybody else on that? Otherwise, I would hand over the word to Jerome. I have a short something to add. Um, I mean, like the great thing about um, how um, amazing it is to get uh, like um, a dialogue within the gaming community as well, which is our, of course, our goal. Like um, uh, people that play video games that watch our fi films and maybe they have an opinion on it is always the best feedback we can get I think because it's uh, it's um, it shows us like many things that we do right and many things we maybe have to improve and um, there have been the video game developers of games we we filmed in um, over uh, sharing their opinion which is a really amazing thing for us and honored us, even if maybe they missed a, maybe a point or maybe they, but it was still like an amazing thing that they just to know that they have an opinion themselves as well as individuals in this, in this world that they take place in and, uh, and of course shape as well um, because they make the games. Okay, I, uh... sorry to, to add like when it comes to like um, feminism like the, the out of out of this early success of shooter games um, the mass media just was directing uh, or was was was, was um, targeting ma male um, like gaming blokes and 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 by that they forgot like in, like the cigarette industry in the beginning of its existence that there is a other half of um, customers available. And now like they did trying to drag in uh, female players, but just making blokey characters more female, um, which is a misunderstanding. that you, this is not a strategy in which you get women into, into this mass media. And so our, our ethos is also like our agenda to convince, um, try to convince um, um, women to, to look at this media, to play with us maybe, or do something with it, use it, reuse it and upcycle it. Um, it it's not representative right now, whatever I say, because <laughs> we are just like, um, um, guys ourselves uh, but but um, unfortunately our our female um, character what what was about to say our female um, member Susanna Flock um, has is excused for today because she has a lot of uh, exhibitions for the next week okay I jump a bit with the topics um, you describe your approach or technique to create your artworks as some kind of uh, media upcycling. Um, upcycling is normally something uh, you know as a process with physical resources. Uh, what, is, what exactly is media upcycling for you? I think um, that term has predominantly to do with, uh, our, our, with the way we work in games. Because I mean, while there are exceptions, the, for the most part, we do not modify games. We kind of use them as they are. So we log into games uh, just like any other player would, and just try to kind of uh, feel out the rules of the gameplay and transgress them. So so we're telling new stories with these with the game's resources, not by completely like by changing the code of the game, but rather by just behaving differently uh, in game worlds. 
Um, and so basically we're using the existing resources to tell stories that otherwise wouldn't be told uh, uh, in, in the genre. That's where the upcycling term comes from. I'd like to take up on that. Um, why is it important to you to not modify the games? Why is it, yeah, what, what, what do you gain by not modifying or? I mean, we, I think um, we're not strictly against modifying. I mean, it's a great technique to use them as well. We used it now for, uh, for some works even, but we do like the idea that uh, the games that we, uh, the, the, the works that we do that actually everybody can do them. It's just the game as it is. It, it doesn't, it's like, it's not, it's not software engineering. It's just, and it, 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 we're not programmers. We're really gamers. We really take what the gaming industry gives us and we <laughs> produce like, you know, producing gold out of shit. That's kind of this alchemy um, thing. So that, that is kind of what you were trying to do. I, I don't know if it works, but, but at least to, yeah, to do something with this huge, workload that was put in the games and these crazy worlds that are being produced for just stage pictures for stupid narratives i mean this is absurd right i mean yeah every western city was probably uh, used many times for many different contents and for many different ideas but um computer game environments they're used once and then they in they have to have something new that's also like 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 some of this another logic of of, of the medium that they have to constantly um, reinvent new kind of thrilling interesting environments and kind of play with these political sceneries like now in cuba or so, somehow but at the same time it's repeating and repeating and repeating and they don't really try something new so they kind of remodel and reshape it and by that they produce a crazy amount of crazy interesting worlds and then it's, it's yeah we just found it kind of irrational to not do something with it you can, if, if you have this Nachhaltigkeit ideas in your hands you, you kind of yeah, it's crazy waste right so that's that's what we're trying to do there I mean Adrian. Oh yes. He's because he's our mother and he needs to. Oh yes. Actually, it's it's more interesting. We we have an external mother from Great Britain that is um doing some customizations for us. Um, so we do try to like um kind of upcycle upcycle games in that way too. Like we, for instance, um ordered a mod that allows us to, to control the birds in Red Dead Redemption 2, which um, gave us um, fantastic options, especially when we did a, a, a Q&A after a movie of a great um, director, Antoine Chapon, on his movie, My Own Landscape. And um, so we were able to do the Q&A as birds talking landscapes in video games while flying as birds. So there is um, ways of kind of breaking the game code or re reusing the game code because these birds were fantastically designed and, and animated in the beginning, um, but you couldn't control them. They were just extras too, like the NPCs. So we kind of um, appropriated nature to a certain point. So this is possible too, yes. But, but we do both like um, modifications and not modifications well t talking about your different expertise how how did do you how get do you get to know each other that's the way how how does your collective grow i mean just last year you doubled your size so what is decisive for joining or being accepted are you interested in the in the, in the end in the end of the day just that refusal should exist and nothing else like this would be the plan um but but it is i mean it's not so easy i mean we always say we are an open collective because we like this idea to also you know it's more interesting to grow and to work with different people and to do more stuff which are kind of similarly minded um but of course it's not so easy then uh, because I mean, first we, we get some people asking, yeah, can I join, can I join? And then they never played a game. And it's like, this is this is difficult in fact, because of course it's a gamers collective. We, we do 
play the games uh, that that we work with. So this is kind of uh, the and and we all share like the same. Yeah, we always say it's like a love hate relationship towards this medium because of course it's overwhelming. It's great. It has this amazing potential but at the same time it's it's like it's like so conservative and, and stupid and uh, limited in, in in many ways so of course that that's probably the common backbone of of all of us yeah so, so. i mean i mean i can maybe add that i sent some fan mail to total refusal that's how i got in contact with with total refusal and that's i think the secret so mm. any fan mail is always welcome and we read it, <laughs> I think. And of course, the backbone, like Robin said, um, is that um, I guess we got to know each other while uh, video playing video games. And um, and it started, it always starts in fun, I think, as well. It's always a joy. And um, it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's video games. Of course, it's a playful medium. And uh, to just uh, be a consumer first and then like upcycle it is what we do, I guess. And that's of course, now with uh, COVID, it's um, hanging out in video games is of course a great, great possibility to, to have social interaction as well. We, we, I have to underline that because if, I think this is so important for many academics or people that uh, work with video games or write about them, they're not really players. And we really we think this is a problem because I mean, you couldn't be like a literature um, intellectual uh, uh, that doesn't really read books. I mean, this would be totally absurd, but you can be like a computer game um, intellectual without really playing a lot of games and it, like this is absurd this is this is the, the common practice that um, that unites us and so uh, as as we were working so much like in the last time we we decided to put this um how to say to to put this in a, in a rhythm now we, we 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 realized that we're not playing enough so we uh, made this rule fix uh, now every friday to actually play <laughs> together so to force us to really do that as well because the trap is big that you get too busy you know it's very time consuming and um yeah people tend to lose the grip of 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 this world actually so that should not happen to us but of course it's always great to see um artists and uh, and and people even that may, that discover this medium through their ways and uh, just that they that it's been talked about and been actually that it has a place now is of course amazing for us um, as well. And it just re reinsures us to, to go that direction further, I think. I, I was uh, wondering whether working with a medium of media, video games has changed the way you play. I mean, is there still a time where you just indulge in the intended gameplay or is there always this critical voice in your head raging about capitalism. <laughs> I, I would, of, of course, of course, we, we like we, 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 we go through um, thousands of hours and to just what the game is telling us and being conformist, like it's the same with any kind of um, um, pseudo rebel, like we, in the most of the time we we play according to the book and and it's 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 great fun to do so but like there is always in our in there's always this thought in our in our head how can we be disobedient or what can be done in this game and by that we choosing the setting for next films next artworks while we're gaming it's not coming during the shower like as with everyone else it's coming <laughs> while we are game and then we discuss and criticize and and and, and drink and politicize whatever i mean we i think we there is this development of um that that we're really observant i think and when we play something together there is times when we we can't stop filming and that's that can be like it's hard to distinguish those two things sometimes 
so where it's where uh, like we we do things and then it, it's yeah it can i think it's more and more like that for me as uh, especially that i'm maybe stop playing the game so much in in uh, and just uh, yeah relearn how to play video games in a way yeah i think what what it really does is that that we kind of uh, in a way whenever we play look for the cracks in the wall like Leonhard and Jonah kind of stated already that that you you are more aware than especially for me as a newer member of Total Refusal um, it led to to the situation to to just check is is there something that 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 I wasn't aware of that probably the game isn't even trying to make me aware of to see that where you can kind of deconstruct parts of the game or, or find beauty in, 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 in a part of the game. For, for instance, just that, uh, a side place of the narration to, to, to explore and, and find things there that you could probably um, use against the normalization effects of the game in return by, by, by filming it, by recontextual, recontextualizing it or, or um, so to say, upcycling it, yes. I think sometimes mm, I I remember that some people that never played video games and I show a video game to them, they might see things uh, in a really, like they might see it in a more true way. And that's really interesting as well, because I'm, so in, I'm like really socialized and grew up with video games. And it's, they have, or they have not a, maybe not a true way but like they 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 see some things that i don't think are personally interesting to me and of course i'm thinking about that too when i'm when i'm filming or when i'm when i'm creating something in a video game um and i guess like yeah that's the thing if you consume a whole video game and you 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 play it from start to finish if that's possible um you have a different approach to it than than being a tourist merely in it, um, but of course you're always a tourist <laughs> in a way, um, and we like to be tourists. I think all of us. Um, how does your uh, work change over the years? Excuse me? Uh, how does did your work, your artistical work, change over the years? I mean, it, was, it, it was declared in the beginning in a video when we shifted from this digital disarmament to pseudo-Marxist media guerrilla. Because like in the pandemics, everything became so more crystalline. Um, um, like, like, like how absurd it is there's that on one one side financial capitalism um, and is like um, skyrocketing and like economics is breaking down and people like suffer a lot um, um, or really badly when it comes to their existence and their incomes and how can like why why is there no cars burning on the street because of of shit like that and and then also like the state comes into again into the role of a bit um managing more or maneuvering more um publicity uh, or how do you say like 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 what 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 the state is for basically and and this 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 with all like the the other aspects of um um, climate catastrophe and so on. Um, this 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 made us for, this forced us to to somehow like become more political, more, more declared, um, more ideological, and um, and to to not to not just do fun stuff anymore. And and we like we continue with doing that. Like, don't be afraid. We always be funny, because um, it's a lubricorn to the people. Like, it's it's something what what everyone understands when when we do humor stuff or when we are doing bizarre, um, um, ironic stuff. Everyone, most mostly everyone gets it. 
So and this, we also this is, like to be funny. We enjoy that as the fact. So it's yeah, not that yeah. we have to force ourselves to be to like to put humor onto our works, but it's something we also enjoy in arts a lot. So this is this is uh, this is without question. Every every work that we do has to be funny, otherwise it's disqualified. I think so. Maybe we broke this law once, but I, I don't know. But but we want to do this. Yeah, this is important to us. Um, and also, you... sorry, sorry. I, so that was my mistake. No, go on. Really, this was really my mistake. Um, um, we like we also like put more force into the theoretical backbone of of our um, uh, collective because because we we like we have also like the the the, the academic um, um, department which is called totally pretentious. Um, and there, there we we, un, we we put everything, we pour everything in what we, what we analyze during the gameplay, and from that it goes sometimes back into arts or our interventions. So this is also like uh, some some point. Like we write papers about this and PhD theses and so on. I, I was just going to ask whether you you would be interested in actually developing a video game or whether that only would make sense if you could develop mainstream video games, which were difficult for a team of six. I mean, we did discuss this question and of course we would be for, if there's any developer listening, please write us, we, we would love to do that really. Um, because I mean, it, it's a perspective we haven't really um, we haven't really discovered so much. We 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 more focused on the the criticizing part, which is also more easy. We know that, um, but but we would be ready. Yeah, of course, we would have ideas. Don't hesitate. What project are you currently working on? There are six of them. <laughs> it is a lot of them. You have so much time. <laughs> no, um, um, yeah. It, 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 let's 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 recollect. Um, there is um, there is one a, a bigger project at the moment, which is called um, "Money is a Form of Speech." Yeah, this is going to be our first. Uh, yeah, uh, our, our first try to make feature length film. And it was we, we did it as a pre pre version um, for uh, as a thirty minutes uh, movie, but we said it's going to be it has to be longer because there's more to, to be said. And this is uh, it's it, it's a movie in Washington D.C. and it's uh, in in the game Tom Clancy's The Division Two, uh, and it's a lecture performance, but also it's a dance movie. So we dance a lot. Um, working together with choreographers and uh, try to make our avatars dance. And um, yeah, this could be a crazy, how, how do we call it? Uh, um, um, not post-apocalyptic lecture belly, that's, that's kind of the working description for it. And it's about uh, yeah, capitalism and democracy because it's a good place to talk about these two topics and how they're, um, how they're contradicted or how they go together or not. Um, on, on while walking through Washington DC. So that's the, probably the biggest project we're, we're on at the moment. Uh, Jerome, Lara, who has one more question? Um, maybe I've got a closing question. Uh, do you have another question, Laura, before I ask them? Okay, so you said you're, you're not uh, game developers or designers, but you're generally interested in creating a game. So just imagine I, this is a suitcase which I hand over to you and there are 200 million euro in it. And you can, give a, to fund a triple A game, you can create um, without caring about any publishers or marketing interests. How will it look like? Or what kind of game will it be? Oh, what else would you do with the money? <laughs> I mean, if we really would have money, is that the question also? Uh, the option to create a AAA game without any marketing interest. Mm. 
because it's mostly triple A games you're know, criticized or the triple A industry. Like, is has any anyone an idea? Because I, I'd like, like to. Yeah, it's a, yeah, yeah. No, I'd okay. like to see some 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 utopia. Like, there's this is very interesting. Like, we we used to talk on capitalism a lot and and about about possibilities behind the system of capitalism. But we we in media we we. We see a lot of dystopia or, or like societies that represent capitalism, but in a much worse way, like in, in very popular media, like, I don't know, um, uh, tri Tributes of Panem, um, is that the English title of that, the thing, like, which is very popular youth novel, like, like you see um, very bad versions of capitalism to, that, that are there to show that capitalism is bad, but you, you never see the other way around in media, like, like how to come in, into a freed society, into a non-capitalist or, or non-violent um, and free society where people can be free individually. Um, you, you don't see visions in neither in film nor in video games. And you could think about develop some kind of vision. But that would yeah, be it would be, it would be great to have some some sort of like maybe yeah some some sort of like maybe solar punk mm -hmm. style like more and more like utopian uh, environmentalist uh, future where we 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 remove the stuff but like the, that's like uh, Atian said but of course it's really hard to like this this question is really hard to to answer because like if we would come out with a triple a game we would be the persons that hopefully get criticized and um, utilized in some way from artists and we become the people that uh, we we become the institution, um, and but of course, like maybe it's more interesting to 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 use this money for to 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 pay as make some studies or or like to 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 develop new ways or new gameplay, like Michael said, um, that that can innovate this medium instead of making another game. With that money because it's a lot of money but in the video game context it's not that much in the triple a context um i mean like i just take the example of for example like star citizen which is the most expensive kickstarter campaign and it's it almost has no gameplay features and loops yet um and it shows that money can't do any, everything i think it's interesting that that the other one, like that Jona and Adrian point out the utopian um, corner of video games, which is kind of super neglected. Recently, I was asked, "Can you can you show me some some utopian, some positive uh, visions of?" Um, no, it isn't because it's mass media, I suppose, and and within this mass media, um, dystopian. Um, settings are kind of a criticism towards society. It it shows what what goes wrong. So cyberpunk is per se like a criticism on onto our like if if capitalism if neoliberalism even becomes more insane, um, which is unimaginable, uh, but depicted in this game. And and so I, I like I want to share one, one vision too of, of what, what 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 I do with one billion of uh, <laughs> of, of of dollar of de develop um, uh, uh, game development. Like I was super inspired by by the series of um, Pripyat. Like when when you are when you are kind of this 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 guy who is who is a, who is a small politician. I'm managing um, this this city and maybe this this power plant, and you always like you're always under pressure, and always like you have to be obedient um, towards and always have to tell not the truth to to the um, to to the next uh, uh, persons in charge of the hierarchy. So you have to somehow uh, maneuver through all these lies and through all these dependencies and through all this 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 this, this strategical um, 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 
yeah, decisions you have to make and you always have, to, you always do some, you're always in a dilemma. Like video game is super about dilemma. It, it's a moral dilemma. It's an economical dilemma. So this is, this is what, what film isn't, isn't, um, pos isn't capable uh, of, of um, exposing you to, but, but like video games can expose you to a lot of dilemmas yourself because you have to solve them. And this would be, this would be like my dream to managing some Soviet, late Soviet um, cities and try to be nice to everyone, but also like super repressive and so on to, to, to not, not that I want to be repressive, don't get me wrong, but just that, that this, this time, this, like this kind of setting is super undeveloped. And but 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 I would, uh, to be honest, I would be with Adrian on this. I because while while of course there is a point that dystopian settings have critical potential, I would question how far that critical potential goes. Because at the end of the day, what it does is it 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 paints a picture that there is no alternative to capitalism, and 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 it basically normalizes the dystopian consequences of capitalism by kind of fetishizing them and. And, and and aestheticizing them it, it 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 develops a kind of like um almost a desire for 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 dystopian circumstances as kind of like the, the a desire to arrive at the end point of capitalism and and the much more difficult question is of course to 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 develop utopian settings and and um from a critical perspective it's important because it would have to basically consider the question of alternatives to, to a capitalist society. So that would also, I would be with Adrian, that would be a, a really interesting project, not just for gaming, but for, I guess, um, uh, many media as a whole, where, where, because where, the, uh, where the whole utopian topic is really underrepresented, yeah. So we're um, getting close to the end of this conversation. The six, 60 minutes are, over and uh, you have been referring to Karl Marx a lot today. Uh, therefore, I will now also now end with a quote by Karl Marx who said, last words are for fools who haven't said enough. Um, I willingly take the last word. So Leonhard, Michael, Robin, Adrian, Jona, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you also Laura and Jerome. And um, many thanks to all those who watched. Have a nice evening and goodbye to all of you and see you soon. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks for thanks. having us. Thanks for having us, yes. It was a great pleasure. Mm -hmm.